Um, so thanks for having me. Um, it's always great to um, come down to new places and talk to new people and hopefully we'll get some people that will get some interest. So, so you'll, I'll be, obviously I'm the Barn Owl Project but you'll hear me talking about other animals as well. So I've, I've, I suppose my experience in what I'm at is I'm probably 22, 23 years now involved in animal rescue and um, I've just about got my hands on everything. So you will see other pictures of other animals and stuff and we will talk about your bees and anything we can get into the conversation will come up. Um, right, so I, I'll, I'll get going. Um, first and foremost, I'm not an expert, okay? So I'm just like any of you guys. I woke up one morning, obviously I was helping out with wildlife and rescue, and, as I said, and but uh, I suppose barn is not my main interest. I, I would sooner perk on falcons, but when you try and help them, they'll give you the middle feather. They don't want any help from you. Um, mm -hmm. Barn owls are very open to I suppose people helping them with nest boxes and uh, changes in, in environment and stuff on farms, all this kind of stuff can really help barn owls and they're one of the indicator species. Um, and what I mean by that is if you've got barn owls on your property or surrounding or you're seeing barn owls, the area generally you're seeing them in, um, it, it's healthy. It's a healthy area because you've got, you've got all the small mammals and stuff which won't live in areas if they don't have food, insects, all this kind of stuff. So generally they're an indicator species for a number of different reasons and we'll talk about that in the, um, when we're going through the talk, okay? Um, so, I suppose, just to give you the background of the project, um, as I said, I've been involved in wildlife for, for uh, in 22, 23 years. Everything that bites is generally what I deal with. Um, I have a passion for birds of prey, right? So I would get calls from all the different rescue groups around the place, um, different parts of the country. If calls come in about whether it's perk and falcon, kestrel, uh, you know, white tail eagle, anything like that, I get the call and I, I would have went out over the time. Um, I spent three years studying perk and falcons, um, just, uh, I suppose, monitoring them. I had cameras through licensing and stuff. I would have had cameras and stuff and we learned loads of new things about them and I suppose that was my passion. Um, and I suppose in that time, I was a wildlife photographer as well and one of the birds I'd never seen was a barn owl. Obviously, you can go to the burn, uh, bird of prey centre, you know, you, you, you'd see them down there but I'd never seen a wild barn owl. And in fact, I'd only ever seen one owl, which is this guy here. He flew over my head one time when I was out. Um, so obviously I, I went off and done a little bit of research and found out they were in trouble. Um, I contacted our colleagues in the UK, which are the Barn Owl Trust. We were at this for 35 years, um, I think as of today, and uh, ended up going off and doing a course with them and figuring out what was going on and tried to kind of apply that back here in Ireland. Um, I suppose I'm one of those people that's just really driven when I see something I get into it I'm all in I'm all in uh, my wife will tell you that uh, I'm never happy unless I'm doing stuff so we set up the project with a number of people so this is only three of the people currently uh, on the main project there's eight people um, and we set, help set up other projects um, in different areas around so different counties and stuff like that who are run by different people okay um, so I'll just go through here I'm going to give you that's kind of the setting up of the project and what we do um, I'll talk more about what kind of what we do in a minute, but just to give you an idea on what you're going to see in Ireland. So these are the wild owls you're going to see in Ireland, or what are you going to see when people ring us? So we, on average, get about 100 calls a year, people telling us they've seen a barn owl. It's not a barn owl, okay? It's either a long-eared owl, which is this guy. They do look white at night, believe it or not. When he, that guy opens up his wings, they're cream underneath, and everyone thinks cream when you see it at night looks white. Um, you have the short-eared owl. There's not a lot of them in Ireland. They're just a visitor now that comes in at this stage, okay? Um, so obviously here's your barn owl, typical. Any photograph you see of a wild owl generally in Ireland came from England, it's not a, it's not a bird that you're gonna see. Um, size wise, they're all roughly in around the same size. Um, it depends on whether it's a male or a female, okay? So we'll just go through here and you'll see some what their young looks like. Um, so just to give you numbers wise, no idea on numbers of short eared owls, they're rare in Ireland. They're only really a visitor at this stage. Um, if you go back in history, the war nest in here. So if I give you an example of what's going on in Ireland, we rescued six this year, highest number ever. We all put everyone to sleep, okay? They all had the same injury, which is a broken wing. Um, you know, like by the time we get to them, there, there's severe damage and stuff. They get caught up in fences. Main reason is because they nest on the ground. There's one, one of the few owls that nest on the ground and they always fly in around that meter height and they just collide with the fences and stuff. And it's always, the break is always up here and it's unrepairable, okay? One of the things in the project for rescue is we don't keep an owl alive if it can't go back to the wild. My opinion is cruel. I deal with wildlife all the time and I've seen them in cages. It's not right, okay? Um, that's just my opinion. I know it's not everyone's opinion. Some people think you should keep them alive. They can have a life. That's, 
I suppose it's up to each individual organization. It just gives you an idea of chicks. So you see these guys here, you're going to see a bit more better pictures in a while and you'll see some video footage. But so to give you an example of a box, this box was put up on a site in Tina where a woman rang me one day and showed me a picture of her barn and I said, Jesus, a brilliant spot, I'll go out and put it up. And then when I arrived, I looked and I went, Jesus, that's not great. It was 10 meters from our house. They had turf in there, they had a caravan in there, they're moving in and out. And I said, it's never going to work. And then she brought her son out and her son was, um, he, he was, uh, I suppose he had special needs and stuff and he was all excited it was coming. And I didn't have Aaron with me who you're going to see in a while. So I have an owl here you're going to see in a while. I didn't have Aaron, but he was, he was awful upset when I didn't think he was going to suit a box. So I went ahead and put the box up. And this shows what I know about, about owls. She rang me, I don't know, six, seven weeks later and said, there's a noise in the box. And we left it for the, till the, the time we could go and visit. And we looked in and there was the owls nesting there. So some owls will put up with, barn owls will put up with disturbance and um, different things. Here's your uh, shorter owl. So again, as I said, they're on the nest on the ground. Uh, we don't come across any of these in Ireland. We're not, we're not aware of any breeding pairs in Ireland at the minute. Um, I'm sure they probably are if they're visiting here, okay? And then this is your typical uh, long-eared owl, okay? So all the, uh, uh, something I would say about these guys, obviously with not the shorter owl, but if a barn owl is nesting on your site um, and they end up on the ground, they have to be put back into the nest, okay? Um, the same with the with the juvenile, the, the long-eared owl. There's a little bit more to it than that from a rescue point of view. So if you find them two days later and they're on the ground, they need to be taken away and they need to be looked after by somebody who will feed them up and then put them back. All right, so there's a little bit. You can kill them if you put them straight back and you don't know how long they're on the ground. Um, but it's it, they can go back. To, remember, they're not a mammal, so the parents aren't going to smell them and say, You're, someone has touched you. It's, it's, none of that business is involved in it. As a matter of fact, barn owls are a little bit on the odd side. You could have three chicks down the road and if she wasn't looking after them you could take one out and put them in a nest up here and she wouldn't know the difference so she could look after you know so there, it, it's it's just one of those things but you can put them back all right um i think of a better slide next one it might be a better slide here so this is just information on what they eat and stuff so i don't know did anybody see the david attenborough uh, wild isles last night there was a really interesting video on it right um if any follow on social media you'll see about the video up it was just another thing that the hunt i'll talk about it in a minute but here's some of the stuff that the, the barn owl eats okay so um we have uh, the bank fowl, which is an invasive species, not spread throughout the whole country yet, but they're in Ireland, I think, since about the 1920s, okay? You have the greater white tooth, the true, which has had the biggest impact on barn owls, okay? And it's been a good impact. Um, then you have all the different mice, house mouse, wood mouse. Um, you have the brown rat. Um, and then over here you have sometimes elite bats, so we have video footage of them waiting outside a roost. From talking to Susan in Battery Rehabilitation Ireland and showing her the footage, she thinks it's, it's uh, long brown-eared bats that tend to go after. They're a bit slower and it's generally the older bats and stuff to try catch. We've seen them taking birds, particularly out of nests. So if they nest in the barn or the shed or whatever, they'll take the chicks at night if they come across them. Okay, it's food to them. Pygmy shrew, which are native pygmy shrew, and then frogs. So we have a particular guy down in Portumla who flies across the Loch Derg and he'll... Um, he, he's, it's a regular thing, so he flies back and forth locked door picking up frogs. Okay, so that's obviously something he specialises in. Probably the same as the guys that are, are, are targeting the bats as well, okay? Um, so the cool footage, I suppose, that David At Attenborough had, he's doing this wild isle, so it is done in Ireland, it's done in Scotland, Wales, and, and parts of the UK, all right? And it, um, it, it, I think it's kind of about time. We're all looking at lions and tigers and all this stuff. We have amazing wildlife around us. But he went into a roost over in the UK where starlings were. There was millions of starlings coming into this uh, forest at night, it was a plantation. And the guys were in setting up, they just wanted to get footage of the starlings, that's all they wanted. But when they went in there, they noticed there was, like, there was five inches of poo on the ground under the trees. These starlings had been staying there for forever, okay? And it was, they were doing the murmuration, so everybody loved them. So they set up a scaffold in the middle, put up a camera on it, and they decided in the middle, it was getting a bit dark, so they put on a, the night vision camera like that picks up the body heat, and they got brilliant footage of it. And after about an hour there, what came along on a barn owl? And he came along and hovering, into the, hovering over the top of them, and he was picking them off one by one. Like, but it was, it was amazing. It never seen before. Just a, just a fluke. They were talking to the cameraman after. It was just a fluke that they got it, but it was amazing footage. Um, so just talk about some of the things here. So the Greater White Tooth True was discovered, I think, in Tipperary in the early 90s. We know it came into Ireland accidentally. Someone brought it in. Okay, this is an invasive species. It spread throughout most of the country now at this stage. Um, like we have the guys up and loud are after finding it up there now so it's it's in most counties and the way they know that is they check the barn owl pellets 
and you'll find out what's in there. All the bones and fur are still in there. So we'll talk about that in a while, how, how that came about. Um, so it, it's been really amazing, to be honest with you, for the barn owl. Because one of the big killers of barn owls, I suppose, barn owl is, is an owl that's always, they don't hold fat in their body and stuff. They're always on the point of starvation. Um, if you think about it, they can't really fly in, in, in the rain and they can't really fly in the wind. You know, so this is Ireland. Um, so you, 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 it's, it's not the ideal climate in Ireland for them. OK, um, so that's number one. So a lot, every year we get hundreds of phone calls and you find hundreds of barn owls and they're, you're saying, what's wrong with this guy? Why is he on the ground? And a lot of it is starvation. You know, you'll check them out. You'll find out in their breastplate and stuff that they don't have a lot of, you know, I wouldn't even say fat. It, it, you, you know, it's, it's not really fat that they store, but they're just the, 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 the breast muscle and stuff is, is kind of wearing away. And generally it's because they, they might have got caught out in the wind or rain, ended up on the ground and they might have been weak at that stage of it's raining for a few days and you know, they just don't, um, they have to be taken away and looked after. Um, but as I said, what seems to have happened is Cork and Tipperary have high numbers of barn owls, but anywhere that the, anywhere that the greater white through trues went, the barn owl is following. So what do barn owls need? So, Can I just ask you something before yeah. we move on from the hunting? Yeah. What is their main sense that they use for hunting? How sound. Is sound. Is it sound? Sound, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah, it's sound. It's not really, they have good eyesight, but they're, they're so they can hear a mouse roughly about 200 metres away so in the grass. Nah, you know, yeah, yeah, it, 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 not really, no. It, like, I suppose like, that's it, wind and rain, just not their friend. They're not waterproof like most birds with the feathers are waterproof. Barn owls are not. You know, they have a, a very slight level of it, but not, not a lot. Generally, when you find them on the ground, they're saturated. And they don't even look, they look half the size because all their plumage, everything is damped down, you know. But um, they just don't have enough to, to kind of get, you know. But again, we, we'll, we'll touch on, on their, what, their hunting abilities again. Um, so what do barn owls need? So obviously, it, all wildlife. When I was coming down here, I passed the farm on the way down. And again, I was looking at it and going like, why, why, why? These manicured hedges, mm. good for nothing. Now, the EU were pushing this. They've stopped, but they were pushing this. Your hedge had to be this size. This guy would come out with a folder and show me your bait boxes for your poison. And he'd tick, tick, tick. Look at your hedge, he was nearly taking out a measuring tape and Jesus, like you're out by you're out by fifty mil there, Mac, I'm, I'm docking your money. All this is rubbish and bad for wildlife. Like what's the point in having a hedge? You know? So you need like consideration needs to be taken for wildlife. Any of those little hedges you see that guys are using for dividing up fields and stuff, like you're not gonna get any wildlife in it. They're not gonna live in it, it doesn't matter. Like so, you know, um I think they need to stop all the cutting of the hedges and stuff. It's coming in now where you you, you cut all that out. It's, there's new schemes coming in like the um, and they haven't gone far enough but the acre scheme has come in now where you're getting a little bit more money for forget about cattle on the land it's it's what wildlife you have here have you got the hen harrier here we're going to give you a payment have you got you know have you got barn owls here we're going to give you a payment we're going to try help you um, and you get farm planners coming out trying to kind of help you out and they'll help you out figure what's on your property and help you out to get other stuff there and that's kind of what it seems to be going that way now at the minute but it needs to be you need healthy, um, like it needs to be an area where there's mammals and stuff. So what we would say is when we come across some farmers that we, that are, you'll get some people that say, I want barn owls here, I don't care what I have to do. We work with those people. And the most successful site we've had is one of them in Galway. It's a 600 acre site. It's an old estate where the woman that owns it, uh, she's of Protestant descent, landlord descent. They still retain the property and the house. I think they lost a thousand acres during the land reform. But uh, Claire Burke is her name. Um, 600 acres what they've left uh, and she's looked after it she was the, one of the first women ever to work for the eu she lived in venice for most of her life and her sister had the house when her sister died she came back and took over um, a lot of big trees on the property big oak trees and beech trees brilliant to see um, but she'd never seen a barn owl there never and this is how i got to, i got to meet her so we met her a few years when we first set the project up we put up eight boxes on the on the site uh, we've done some soft release, which is injured owls coming in. Now, they don't. Uh, I know people think like, oh, get an owl, stick it in a box. I have an owl. It doesn't work that way. They're gone in the morning when you wake up. But um, we've done a lot of work there to keep them there. Um, next year, we had barn owls born there for the first time. And the great thing about the site is they have records to the wildlife on the site for over 100 years. So it, it's really well looked after. They don't use poison. There's a dairy farm in there now. She rents out the land. Um, and the, the dairy guys are mad into it as well. Like, they're ringing us. You know, like I think it four calls this week saying this, they're using this box this year. It's brilliant. Unfortunately, the first year they were born there, they were dead. Born on the Friday, dead on the Sunday, because the pine martin climbed up and killed them all. But that's, that's wildlife, that's nature for you. It's a pine martin is a pine martin. You, we can't be, you know, you, you, you like red squirrels, you like pine martins. I'll put it that way.
Um, so these are things we'll do. So normally what we would do uh, is we would say to a farmer, if you really want it, there's to keep margins <coughs> in your field. So you, your hedgerows in the middle, you pull out a meter either side or two meters or much as you want to give and you pull one strand of wire. The reason you're putting one strand of wire there is because a lot of the payments are coming off the amount of area that's under cattle. You can pull that wire, like just pull it out of it. It's electric fence you'll put in there and you let that area grow for all the small mammals, mice, rats, all that stuff and let it in. Better still, you might put in some game cover. Talk to your local gun club ask them will they plant some game cover for the pheasants they don't shoot over game cover it's for the pheasants it that'll attract your small rodents and stuff and guaranteed without failure you're going to get barn owls there you put a couple of stakes down in the middle of the field and in the middle of the year without failure you'll see barn owls there even if you think they're not in your area you know so um it just takes sorry, some sorry. yeah the stakes mean in landing post yeah um. yeah so you put up a stake two meter stake but in six of them down along the middle of a field um and that's what they'll use to hunt that's why you'll see them. You'll see them in the middle of the night, you'll be driving by. So we've had that. That was another story we done up in Mayo. Guy rang us up, he had two acres. I had two horses in there. My daughters had them when they were living here. They'd gone to college, sold the horses. I've got a barn. Um, didn't agree with the putting a box in the barn because it was in his back garden facing into his house and he was using it every day. But what else can I do? So he got onto the local gun club, planted the whole lot, sent me a video, I think four months later, of three barn owls in there. It was, the, it was probably two juveniles and a female at that stage. When you're saying planting up for the gun club, you mean tall grasses? They they generally have a have a stuff. A it's it's like yeah game cover. They call it. I don't know exactly what it is. I know that it's it's a it's game cover with food. There, but it's not no 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 no. It's 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 just it's just a, a crop. I think that some of these small mammals will eat and survive in, and they get cover in as well. So okay. um the the they don't shoot over it. I know that the 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 pheasants will hide in it and whatever. It's a way of that kind of stuff, and they might even feed them there. But that's kind of the stuff you want. Um, this just give you an idea of the life cycle, I suppose, of of um the barn okay um, so we obviously have the egg uh, so a female will lay an egg okay so a female she'll come to the nest site after the male you'll, you'll see some video footage in a while but the male put a lot of effort in if it's not a historical site so if it's a new site a box you'll see the male is the one that convinced her to use it he'll be doing a bit of dancing and squawking at her and all sorts of funny stuff and giving her little gifts and every sort of stuff um, to try to get her to take the box right sometimes she goes yay and sometimes she goes nay but um, and it can seem quite aggressive, you'll see it in a while, it seems quite aggressive when they're doing it and funny, but what will happen then is if she'll stay at the nest site and he'll go off hunting, he'll come back and he'll feed her, she lays an egg, right, she'll sit in the egg straight away, two days later she'll lay another egg, two days later she so you'll see video footage maybe in a while where I have one small little chicken, real big one, and people say, oh my god, like he's, that one's going to die, but it's not the case, it's, they're born at different times, obviously they think, if you talk to people that have studied this, they'll tell you that the reason that it's it's probably to do with shortage of food somewhere in the and the smaller one is going to die. You've, you've kind of spread them out as far as you can, so you might have a good spell for a few weeks, and the big one is big. And you know we see that on some sites where where now generally the cameras we've had out on sites they all survive till till to fledge. The most the, the most dangerous time is fledging for them always. Um, so you can see kind of the, the cycle to go through here, like they're. You know, they're, they're quite ugly, I think, up until 48, in around the 48 days. They are, tell, I'm telling you, they're, and they're dirty little buggers as well. So you'll see Erin when I take her out. We have her since she was five weeks. Um, and, um, she, like, they're just, it's, it's like a baby, but you don't put a dribbler on it. it. They destroy themselves and stuff, and they're filthy, dirty, and smelly, and pooping all over the place. And, you know, people think barn owls are lovely, clean animals. They're not. Um, so right up to fully grown here. At like anywhere from like you know I think that 63 days is written down there but like you're talking about 14 weeks to get to the point of fledging right and then they're one of these birds that it's ingrained them how to hunt like the parents don't bring them out like some birds and show them like this is what you're it, it doesn't seem what we've seen on the cameras that sometimes the parents will bring it back a, a live piece of prey it's funny sometimes because the chicks are looking at and there goes the the shrew boom, flying by and next he comes back up this side <laughs> he's running around inside in the loft and the, the birds don't even the chicks are just looking at it going you know um, so sometimes the parents will bring it back and, and leave it there alive. It's probably a way of saying like, like this is food lads, it's not, you're not going to soup max, it's, you've got to, um, but they definitely, they, they don't tend to bring them out yeah, and, and train them out to hunt. What they do, what would happen is generally the, the juveniles will leave the site and they'll go down the road to a different area and you'll hear them calling down there. So we often get calls, I look at my map and I'd say like there's barn owls nesting here and I get a guy like a kilometre down the road ringing me saying like I'm hearing this roaring every night. And we go down and we see all the pellets and stuff there, and it's, it, it can be the same birds, okay? Because once they leave the roost, we found that the, once they fledge, they don't tend to come back. 
it's very rare you might see one or two coming back on and off but it's not uh it's not something that's that common okay so um the bit yeah so this is this is kind of typical like you can see these guys are fully grown like you can see a little bit of down on the on the back here just so these guys are in around the, the 10 11 weeks and you have the female or the male coming back here feeding them and they're quite aggressive you know they, they sound aggressive you know um but it's always who's gonna who's vying for the best the, so the, the usually the biggest guy you'll hear him roaring and screaming when he's fully when he's fed that's it he's quiet and the next guy will take over and so on but they're always jostling for food and stuff you know um as i was telling you the fledging is so i'll give you an example of fledging and what, what what's going on mm -hmm. i have a camera on a site down in tina uh last uh, the year before last four birds hatched out on that site and they all made it like i mean at one stage it was a small little guy and i was like god you know my your your bloody heart is going saying like should i go in there and interfere which you're not supposed to um because this guy's going to die but they all made it They're all beautiful big adult birds they all decided to fledge on a night like tonight where there was wind and rain and over the next couple of days we were getting the phone calls and they were all dead so that's how hard it is 80 85 percent of all birds of prey in ireland are dead before the first christmas okay so it's it's extreme they don't need our help to die you know they just don't need our help like they don't need us poisoning them shooting them cutting down their knocking down their old buildings and stuff they're nesting they don't need any of that because they'll do it themselves you know they run into stuff they're trying to learn how to fly a lot of them uh, most of them i would say die of starvation because they, they just don't figure out to hunt and i know that on the site we were talking about where we have the eight boxes up the same owls visit all of those boxes they have them all in their head and what they'll tend to do is come out on the night when it's raining when the rain dies down they'll fly from one box to the other and hunt on the way so they're not going to get caught out that long in the rain they've got somewhere to go so that's why it's always better if you're putting up a box to put up two boxes or tree boxes and spread them out on your farm you know um on average on average about 600 barn owls are killed every year on the roads i'd say it's much higher than that but on average about 600 so i've picked up i've picked up in 2000 uh in 22 from ord and to van Lisloe, which is 43 kilometers we picked up 22 23 dead barn owls in that section the roads the guys who maintained the roads picked them up for us the highest year ever before that was six so they're increased that tells you numbers are increasing but it's generally juveniles that are killed okay um and that's why i would say as well that anybody that's thinking about putting up a box i know the acre scheme if any sign up to it say you can put up a box within 500 meters of a major road that's rubbish don't put up a box anywhere near a road one kilometer from a major road i'm not talking about the roads that are here i'm talking about a motorway or a dune carriageway you would not put a box up i don't know how that got into it it shouldn't have got into it okay um so with Small yeah. Roads, like around here. Yeah, they're not too. You, you obviously wouldn't put it beside the road, but if you're keeping it back 100 meters, you're grand. 80 meters, 50 meters, you're grand. Yeah, it, it, there is an awful lot of them killed on the major big roads. We don't find so many on the on the small secondary roads, but the big motorways and roads are slaughter for for barn owls, unfortunately, and it tends to be barn owls. We had two long eared owls this week on the same stretch of road. Um, we had six in total in 22 uh, that turned up out of that same bunch. So we collect them. We'll just sex them, see what they are, see is there any other things that we can figure out with them, um, and then we just dispose of the bodies. Not much else we can do on them, you know. So just give you an idea of where they nest. So this is a castle. It's called Longford Castle. They're nesting in that. This is down in Offaly. It's an old mill. It's not the best site because it's just a big, thick wall with a hole. So it's not the best for a barn owl to go straight into a cavity because mm -hmm. the chicks are just going to fall out. They get very boisterous and end up in the ground to die, okay? So all, always the best for an owl would be into a hole and a drop down or probably the best place of them all and they love it is an old chimney in an old house right so um some of the typical kind of spots you'll see some more of them here they're in that where that slate is missing they're in the attic okay this house is in banisloe county galway garbley college i grew up beside it and it's where the first place i ever seen a wild barn owl right mm -hmm. when my neighbor i told my neighbor he was doing this he said i'll tell you come down here out of that chimney up there 32 33 feet up right and they're down two meters down the chimney brilliant spot like brilliant spot what they'll tend to do is a jackdaws and then we'll block it up and eventually these guys will move in so it could be a house with no roof a house with a roof you know it can be in the attic down the chimney anywhere like that um i had an interesting one down actually down here in clear a guy rang me he was knocking a house and he followed the facebook page i can't remember the exact location now but he was knocking a house he was knocking the two chimneys off either end it was an old house 100 years old and he was just bringing the roof straight across and getting rid of the chimneys when he came to knock he knocked the first one came to the second one looked down he seen something flying out looked down those chicks down there just sent me a picture what are they i said they're barnals i said you got to stop the work now legally he has to stop the work right um they're all they're highly protected but i know i know some people say my house so he was mad for it like he's brilliant 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 i i just i love having him here so 
what he, what he done was he went he left them alone, done other work on the house. Um, unfortunately, again, similar to the ones that I was talking about, they fledged and they died. But what he the, the owls generally move away for a while. He knocked the chimney, rebuilt the chimney, made it false. So it's it's just a, a really like a box, right? And we give him a door that he puts in it. So he's got a little inspection hatch so we can go up and check what's going on in there. And the chimney is the pot. So he's left it the same way she was getting in and out. So when you go into the hole, it's just a concrete base with sawdust in it. So there's a guy that's doing, like, you know, and that's what you would have to do in the UK legally if you went onto a site, an old building that barn owls are in, you have to put back. You have to put in an S site temporarily for them, and you got to put back a permanent nest site. It's not yet done in Ireland, you know. Um, and we've had a few of them. We had them. We had a site in Limerick where a guy built a, he built an extension. He stopped because of COVID, and they were living in the house out every night having a barbecue in the garden. And he said, like, there's something going on in here. And I send you sent me the sound, and I said it's barn owls, and they were looking out the hole of them every night. Very unusual because they don't tolerate disturbance. But when I went down, I threw the camera and see what was going on. They had three chicks, feet male and female were in there, and it was brilliant. So it'd be pretty cool. Something I'd like. Right, if you're on your site and you're looking for so loads of sites we go to people say, I say, can I check the Caesar and the barn owls? No, there's no owls here. We walk in and we find stuff. And we're like, yeah, they're coming in here at night. So they're obviously called barn owls because they visit barns at night. They'll go up into the rafters and stuff, fall asleep, and as soon as they hear a mouse, they wake up. Like their hearing is extreme. It's 10 times, even more than that, better than So a mouse at about 200 meters away. They can hear a mouse moving around the grass. So that's very good. Their eyesight is about three times what we have. Um, and generally what the eyesight, where the eyesight comes in is if they come out on a night where the moon is out the, and this crowd, according to the guys or friends in the UK they said that they, they'll, they have enough sight that they can pick out landmarks, trees and everything so when they're out in the pitch black they know where they're going you know, so, um, so these things obviously you're going to find a feather once you've seen a couple of barn owl feathers you're never, going to, you're never going to say be bringing me up and saying what's this so what you're going to get is this is a calcified barn owl. So I told you about barn owls falling out. So the site again in Tina, the reason we put the camera in is it was an old building, slate missing in the roof. Uh, it looked like a single story building. When you got in, it was one of those little tiny bungalows with the stairs up in the corner. When I went up, I was finding like, I found 30 of these guys on the floor. They're all dead juvenile barn owls. So over the years, every time they'd hatch out, one or two would fall out through a hole. So there was a hole in the slate missing. The rain was going down, rotten all the timber. And there was a hole down into the hole, which, down to the bottom of the house. And these guys were just falling out every year. Okay, so I think last year we got 68 calls to return them to the nest. 68 juvenile out barn owls found the ground, okay? So had a look around and I said, Jesus, like, what's going on here? Um, and I had identified the site early in the year and I did see a barn owl there, a male barn owl flying around the bottom of the house. But what happened was I, I, I decided, I, geez, I'd go up and I'll try block this hole a bit. But I stuck my phone up and there was four little, well, big chicks Juvenile barn owls looking at me and I said, it's just brilliant, like new sight. And I was delighted over the moon. So I spent an hour blocking up the hole so they couldn't fall out. And then I turned around looking at the ground. There was a lad hissing at me in the ground. <laughs> so I had to do all, undo it all and put them back up again. Um, and then I had left a small hole there for the rain to come down. And I'd, I was in work on the Monday and I was, it was in my head like, this is uh, like that hole. I should have blocked it. I should have blocked it. And I ended up driving the whole way from work, which is like 60 miles away from my house uh, or from work. Um, and when I got there, I brought a big sheet of ply and I blocked it up again. And I looked into, there was a door open in an old room and I looked in, there he was sitting on the window again. So I had to go back and undo it all again, Sorry. put him back up. So <laughs> it wasn't funny at the time. Um, so then you have whitewash. So this is the most common thing you're going to see. You walk into your shed, you look up in the beam, look on the ground. So it doesn't look like ordinary bird poo. It's like somebody got brilliant white paint and splashed on the ground. Sometimes it's really thick and it's really bright, okay? So that's the sign of an owl. It's either a barn owl or a longer owl. Generally, it'll be a barn owl, okay? And then the famous one you're looking for is a pellet. It's about the size of your thumb, right? You can pick it up if you're if you're not squeamish break it open so the black part it's what they regurgitate back up okay so it's what they can't digest the stomach acid isn't isn't strong enough to digest everything so the, the food goes down to eat them the, the the food whole mouse shrew or whatever they're eating um goes into the stomach they take what they need from it and the rest of it is regurgitated back up so the black part is the fur and then inside that is every single bone so you can establish what it's eating you that's where where I told you in Tipperary to discover the greater white tooth, the true pellets. If you're putting up a box, we recommend you put wood shavings in the box, 50 mil on the bottom of it, because what they normally do to make their nest would be they'll regurgitate the pellets, they'll dry out and they'll break them up and use the fur to nest on. Okay, but if a barn owl, a barn owl can lay eggs in a nest box 10 days after finding it, that's how fast they can be. So if they don't have any bedding in there, they're going to and they have to lay there, they're going to lay it on the plywood and more than likely going to break the eggs or they'll roll away from them. So it's always give them a helping hand. Don't put anything else in it. Don't put straw, hay, any of that stuff. It all carries um, mold and stuff inside in it and it gets into, it'll get into the lungs. We've had those issues before down in Limerick where it'll get into the lungs of the barn owl and you'll end up uh, 
dying from some sort of lung infection. So any either following the project you know we've done a big a lot we've we've been in the doll on rodenticide and, and rat poison we've been in the shannad we've been on the radio we've been everywhere it doesn't seem to make a difference people don't seem to want to listen ireland uses roughly about four times per head more rat poison rodenticide than they do in the uk the uk figures show that 88 percent of all living barn owls have rat poison in them ireland is well up in the 90s so imagine these are living birds that have rat poison in them so they eat the rats mice what eats the poison? Rats, mice, shrews, insects, slugs, everything, right? I'd go as far as to say that, that in Ireland, probably most predators in Ireland, your foxes, your pine martens, your stoats, anything that preys on something else, your hedgehogs, your badgers, all have rodenticide in them. Yeah, so like if you have an owl on your property, like one owl could, could potentially consume anywhere from like, you know, seven to hundred to a thousand rats and mice a year, right? Depends, like he's obviously one rat is probably enough in a night for him, but like small, small things like mice and stuff, they'll, they'll go through them, right? So anybody watch uh, Ear to the Ground, you would have seen a farmer that put up a box and he said he used to use rodenticide, he's never had to go near it again, he hasn't seen any rodents on his farm. Um, if you've got loads of rodents, you might get two pairs of arnos. They, they, they don't really hold the, the, the stuff that the studies have been done, they don't hold the territory. Two barnows will cross each other in a field at night and ignore each other, where other birds of prey will have a go, okay? But... I think really that comes down to how well the area is, how much food is in the area and stuff like that. But we have one site in Port Tumla where one of the guys uh, in Birdwatch Ireland told me they're nesting within 200 metres of each other. And when I brought that up at a thing in the UK with the guys, they said they were shocked. Never heard of it, you know. But we, have a, we know of a good few sites now, so I would tell you a hot, that one of the hot spots for me in Galway would be Port Tumla. It's got six nest sites in a tiny area. Why? Because it's in an SAC right beside the Shannon. They can't spray, they can't cut, they can't do anything. And there's loads of mice, rats, and all the other stuff there. So they have loads of food. So you give them an opportunity to come in. And, it, like, it, you know, if you're living close to your neighbour, he's going to be cleaning your neighbour's place out. And it'll just, it, it, it'll keep them in the area longer. What tends to happen in is they start pushing out as the food dwindles down, they'll start pushing out, and they'll go out to six kilometres. You know, they could nest on your site this year and your neighbour's site the next year, but they're generally faithful on sites, you know. Um, there's a f yeah, so like poison is a big thing, you know, my advice to people would be, and, and some people would say you're kind of going, it's a bit of hypocritical, but if I had a farm, I'd probably with rats and mice and stuff, you, you do the simple things, I have a sheet here that'll tell people what to do, right, but you block up the holes, you keep food away from them, you do all the stuff you can do, you, you've got to do something outside of the easiest thing, and the easiest thing is to just get a bag of, you know, like, of poison and throw it on the ground, that's the easiest thing to do, but you're, you're not going to have... Um, you know, any place then that's going to be sustainable for not just barn owls, but your long-eared owls, short-eared owls, if you're ever lucky um, to come across them, no wildlife will be sustained on your property if you're, if you're kind of doing that. Um, yeah, so like, I suppose that's kind of it. Um, you can always, <clears throat> I'm always saying to people, so like, uh, conservation is not just for chosen few. You don't have to be a guy who went off to university and, and an ecologist or an ornithologist or a, whatever ecologist you want to be. You don't have to be any of those things to, to do something in your community. Like, you know, um, yeah, I have a background in, in wildlife and trying to help wildlife and stuff, but I don't have a degree in it. I don't have, you can educate yourself, you can put yourself out there, you can go off with groups and learn. It doesn't have to be burnout. Yeah, so you can start up anything you want to start up if you have a passion for it. And don't ever let anybody stand in front of you and tell you that it's, it's not your place to do it. We've, there's about 10 men's sheds all over the country building boxes and supplying them to communities and stuff like that. So it, it's, it's good to get community involvement and stuff. As I said, it doesn't have to be barn owls. It could be the long-eared owl. You can help the long-eared owl. They'll, they'll, they nest in trees and stuff like that, but you can, people put up baskets for them. You go to your, your little evergreen tree, you make it easy for you. You get those baskets, you put flowers into, you line it, put it up on the tree and they'll use it. You know, so there's loads of stuff you can get involved in. It doesn't have to be. This is just showing you what's tar what poison. So target species, obviously nobody likes a rat. Um, all wildlife carries diseases at some time or other, so don't be fooling yourself about the rat thinking he's, geez, he's you know, nothing wrong with the rats either. We just don't like them around our house and they do damage, okay? Um, but they, they carry certain diseases that are, have been there in the past and they have a bad name. But all of these animals potentially have disease, okay? Um, mice, rats, and um, what else does it kill that it's not supposed to kill? Nobody wants, to, I don't think anybody here would be targeting a little pygmy shrew. You can see them in your garden, you can pick them up. Um, buzzards. Some people don't like buzzards, but they're protected species and they're doing a great job. So he eats, uh, the buzzard eats rats and mice, the barn owl eats rats and mice, the kestrel eats rats and mice. I, I'm not too sure if the kestrel eats a rat, a small rat maybe. Pine martin will eat everything. Uh, Long-eared owl will the same thing. The foxes will eat them. The sh like, and I could add on a list, it's over here. 
you know, the stores, all these things will all eat. I know some people don't like some of these things, but like they're all doing the job that we're giving out about. Do you know, as you said, like it is rodenticide. These guys do the job that we're going out paying poison for, you know, so um, it's indiscriminate in everything it does and includes, I'd go as far to say like there's probably points where it's got into the human food chain. It has to have got in, you know, um, so um, these are just some of the things we put together. So you can shoot them, remove access, harborage places that they live, encourage natural predators like we've talked about, live traps, instant traps, these electronic traps. So no, I can't find legislation on it. Apparently you can't do that, right? But you can't, I can't find legislation saying you can't do it. But uh, yeah, some people then, I've written here then, killing rodents uh, can only provide a short term control. In other words, you killing them. So you need to bring in something that'll do it for you. You're not going to be running around the place all the time. So here's Claire Burke on her famous site. All right, there's one of the boxes we put up, right? Then it, and there's, there's the two chicks, the two juveniles, and they fledged last year. We had a camera, a big camera on the outside here. All the cameras are done under license, so you cannot put a camera on a site like that. You'll be hauled up to the court if you do, okay? So just be aware of that. All, everything we do is licensed. Every visit we pay to a site is licensed. Um, so it has to be that way and for there, there's plenty of good reasons for it okay um, so there's the two juveniles there sorry John yeah. just on that say if somebody got your design and um, John yeah. has amazing design for nest boxes here and made a nest box and done, <coughs> can you put it up is it legal for you to put it up yourself or? of course it is yeah but it's, you just can't go near it then once it's up you just kind of leave yeah it so it, it, the law is kind of funny as in like so tech, like tech you know the way it is the way it works is that if it's a roost site or a nest site, it's protected by law. So if you put a box up on a Monday and a barn owl decides to roost in it and choose it, it's technically it's protected. But there's, there, there is obviously room there. If you need to knock the building, you need to cut the tree, you, you, you just need to involve National Parks and Wildlife. They might say, that's grand, you need to put a box up down there first. It, mm -hmm. it's, nobody's gonna say to you, you can't do it, it's your property. But it's just about being respectful towards what you're doing. Like the, it, you know, it, 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 for me, it would be, like I've had loads of good people contact me. I had one guy that was knocking a whole house. He had the stone salt uh, for the house. Like a, a guy was coming to pick it up in a truck. And when he put up the, just out of curiosity, he put up this, the, the, the digger to look and it, there was an owl in it. And then he contacted Parks and Wildlife. Now, his problem was he had never been in for a license to knock the house because it's an old house that had bats and everything else, but they worked with him because at least he showed he cared. He could have knocked it and said nothing to anybody and couldn't have give a damn. But what happened is we came out, we put up a box, he left it for three months, which was amazing. So the, the owl moved into the box, he knocked the house. So that's what it's about. Same as the guy down in Clare um, that I went to where he done the thing in the chimney. He didn't have to do that. Just put a box up on the site is enough, you know. Um, so this shows you the difference between a male and a female. So in most birds of prey, the female is the biggest. Male is smaller. And they think it's through it that the, that the female protects the nest because she's there most often, right? What's the difference between the male and the female? So the, the, the female has all these little dots on her. See all these little dots? She's a little bit darker. The, the uh, male is, is a lot whiter here. Sometimes he'll have a few little dots. There's the odd one that tries to fool people. I think there's about 10% of barn owls that you can't sex by looking at them unless you have another owl beside it. And you're, but there is the odd one, you know. Uh, the female as well, you can tell by her feet are much bigger. Um, and she's, she's darker around the orb around her face, okay? But once you've seen two of them side by side, you, you'll fairly, you'll, get, you'll, you'll understand it. So here's just a quick bit of footage of the guys. Uh, yeah, so that's called Snorden, believe it or not. Don't know who came up with that name, but that's what it's called. So they're begging for food, basically. That's what they're doing. So at, at what happens, the male feeds the female, she stays with the chicks at six weeks, seven weeks, when they have enough down on them to regulate their body heat, she goes as well. And all I'd say is, would you blame her? So if she's there, they're begging for food all the time. Like, do you know, it's like having a child at home constantly, you know, mammy, daddy, mammy, daddy. And then they hear so well, so it must be really lovely yeah. for them. Yeah, so it's one of those things. We can see them getting bigger here, look. Is that an attic, is it? Yeah, so that's a tiny little attic in one of you know those little bungalows you would see years ago and you'd go in, you think it's a single story and there's a tiny little stairs in the corner and you're upstairs bending down. That's one of those houses and that's a small space. But there was last, th this year there was four in it. Last year there was five in it. Um, and this year I only put the camera live yesterday. We turned the cameras off. We never go back near the cameras. They're solar paneled, SIM card operated, especially there are cameras you can buy, but they had to be modified because there's a frequency sound off them, so they had to be grounded and everything, because the barn owl can hear the frequency. Oh, the house was empty? The house was empty since yeah. the 70s. 
70s. No, I no, and when I walked into the house, which was, I find these cool things all the time, I rang the people who owned the house and your man says, brilliant. I didn't think there was anything in there. Nobody's been in that house since 1970, since my uncle died. Yeah. Walked in and there was clay pipes all over the place from the funeral. Yeah. There was high nillies and all this stuff going on, you know. We went in and we repaired the roof. So there was slates missing here, there and everywhere and we were worrying about the place rotten. rotten. So we went up and we, we asked him, is it okay? So we repaired the roof to, because it's, it's a, it's a, it is a historical site. We, I would say that there's barn owls on that site since that slate fell out and they can tell me that it's over 30 years. Because I found, I think, I, I don't know the exact figure, but it was definitely in the 20s of juvenile barn owls dead there, like, you know? Even it have to be a very large gap no. for it to go in. No, they can, uh, uh, yeah, 70, 70 millimetres. Like, so this will tell you about disturbance here, right? So I'm talking about disturbance of barn owls so you'll understand what I'm talking about and how easy it is to disturb them, right? So that's them communicating. These are a new pair of barn owls. They're not together long, and it sounds very aggressive. But she's obviously saying thanks, he brought her a mouse. Now what's happening here is he's trying to get her to take that box as a nest site, right? Mm -hmm. So he goes away, he brings food and he's roaring and she starts screaming, she takes it off him, it's very frantic, right? Mm -hmm. So what happened here, we had a camera on the inside of this box and oh. yeah, she laid an egg, okay? And then I decided to turn the camera off because I, I thought I could hear something on my side and I was worried she could hear it on her side. Now I found out afterwards she couldn't, it was an interference thing on the, the phone we were using because they're all logged to the phone, okay? And but, but I switched it back on six, seven weeks later and the egg was there and she was gone. But in the meantime, the camera still records motion by itself, okay? So I went back through the footage to see what was going on and all I could see was the day that I had looked and seen the egg, that evening, the box shuddered. But, so when I put up the box there, I spoke to the farmer. There, were, there was two farmers renting land. This woman, uh, she's an old woman, she got into a nursing home. He had hay in the shed. He said, I only go there once or twice you know, a, a year to take it out. One farmer had one end of the shed and the other farmer the other end of the shed. One came in, moved the bale, hopped it off the RSJ, rattled the box, she left. Mm. Size is gone. So that's how mm. disturbance. Every owl is different. I've got another one down in Larnstown. If any of you know where Larnstown is, in, in, again, it's in, it's uh, down kind of east band of slow there, but uh, the, the guy down there lives in a big castle. Um, really cool spot, one of the coolest spots, Marty. It's a bloody, I can't think of his second name, but anyways, he, 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 he's a bit of an interesting character, I would say at least, but the castle is still there and he lives in the castle and he said, I have barn owls here for 30 years, but I haven't seen them in two years. And I said, where do they be? And there's a door he walks in every day, there was a hole there. And I said, can I stick a camera here on the ground to see? And I come back next morning and there was the barn owl going in and out all night and he hadn't seen them in two years. Like, <laughs> So it's just, yeah, he just, some of them are really quiet, some of them are really loud. So that's kind of it on, on uh, my side, guys. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, Hit me. Barn owls here, where we live. Yeah. West Clare, North West Clare. Yeah. It's pretty wild. There's a few places that are more sheltered. Mm. Generally, it's well, it's not, it's not temporary. Yeah. So we. So what's the story? <laughs> yeah, so we don't have a lot of uh, information from Clare. We like, I mean, we have information from a lot of counties, not a lot from Clare. I probably have, could tell you about maybe, in the whole of Clare, I could probably only tell you about six sites. Um, that doesn't mean they're not there. No, it's just that people aren't, yeah. So I would say, like, if you're in the area and you've got old buildings, you don't have, I think out the road here, I went out for a drive, there's an there's a area out there with a couple of big trees, but you don't have an awful lot of big trees for them to be going into the bodies. So you're looking at old buildings um, and stuff like that. Um, like, it'd be worthwhile for, like, some local people to do a bit of discovery work. So you don't need a license for that as long as you don't go looking for a nest. But that's basically going, walk into an old building. Obviously, you've got to get permission and stuff. Look for the signs I've shown you. You can go online and see all this stuff. So if you go on YouTube and put in the Barn Owl Trust who are our friends in the UK, the video footage of all of this stuff, how to do it. You basically walk in, you look for the signs, and it depends on the signs you find, you'll know whether or not they're, they're there or not, or the visit or what kind of stuff. And you just document that stuff. Um, but like, look, they're here. You'll, as I said, you'll go to sites and people will say, like, there's no owls here. And we'll walk down and we'll come back and say, there are. And these are people that are out in the land all the time. You, 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 the, the only way you're going to know if there's an owl there is if you see it. So um, it's kind of, it is crucial, guys, if, if you are going looking and there's no harm in going looking, you just don't look for the nest site because you'll disturb them. And it's very crucial that you don't flush a barn owl, right? Um, so even when we're doing surveys and stuff, and we're, we're, we're certified to do that or we're licensed like, to do surveys and stuff, and we've done training with the guys in the UK like, and all that, like, we would never try flush a bird. Um, it, it'd be the last thing you do, you know? 
flush a bird is where you walk into the building and the bird flies out because you're going in. So if you obviously if you walk deliberately into going in to see deliberately it. going in to see it, what you're going in to is look for signs. So walk into a. Uh, I don't know. Have you any castles around here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So <laughs> do, do, well, the way to know about a barn owl is every there's over there's over Galway had like when we done the survey in, in Galway, right? We went from I think nine sites in Galway that that people were aware of before we started the project. We're up on about seventy now, and that was through discovery and some boxes, right? So. The one, the first place we went to would, would be the castles. It's the first giveaway if there's a barn owl in the area because they're yeah. going to visit the castle. So into the castle yeah. and look for pellets. Yeah, look for pellets and look for whitewash, I look for feathers. Right yeah, here. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And it's just flat sheeting. You'll get that and you'll wrap it around the tree. And we have, we could see then from the video that the, uh, the, the, the pine marten would come to the bottom of the tree. He'd come up as far as the stuff and he'd go around in a circle. He didn't figure out and he tried to climb on it and he was trying to get onto every sort of thing. He went down and he'd, 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 he'd do a wee on the tree with frustration and he, but he'd stay on the ground for a while and he'd go off. And, and I think by the time we went to, um, to have a look at the, the owls you've seen in the picture there to see how healthy they were and what was going on with them, the whole place was covered in pine marten scat. Yeah, like yeah. he was so frustrated at the bottom of the tree. He could hear the owls there every night and the year before he'd killed all the owls on that site. Different box, but yeah, yeah. So he's he, at the end of the day, he's only trying to survive. And if he kills your chickens, I, I, like uh, you know, I, used, I used to had a small stead myself. Like I had fifty hens, I had pigs, and I had bits and pieces. And like I used to get the fox, used to kill the chickens, and I like that's my fault. You know, yeah. if the, if if the buzzard is killing your pheasants, that's your that's that's not that's not the buzzard's problem. He's only trying to survive. Your pheasants belong in Asia. Like people need to realize this stuff. You know, I've often went to gun clubs, and your man's like, oh, the, the that buzzard, no, that buzzard, he's killing all our pheasants. Yeah, or the pine marten's getting your. If he's getting your chickens, put up a better fence. Pub, yeah, put up, put up, put up, put up a fence. Moving, but I would say if you have a castle up the road and you know they're nesting in the castle and you're living like a kilometer away, I be if it was me, I'd be putting up a box. You know, the, the last option you have, which might be suitable for people that want to put up something, would be a pole box. Get an old ESB pole, mm. go down the corner of the field, drive it into the ground, stick, stick your box up on it. Mm. Bob's junk. It's probably a little bit of work putting in the pole, but it's probably a really easy option because it's easy to wrap that and stop Pine Martin getting up. So it's only a pole. You don't have to get an ESB pole. You can go down and get a 4x4. Four four. You know, it's just make sure it's not going to wave in the, in, the, in the wind. And it's once you have the hard work done, which is a pole, Mounted up on it. Any look at Jeremy Clarkson's farm, you see all the boxy but up in the, the similar ESB poles. You can go to your local like sawmill and get a pole and throw it in there. I wouldn't sit it directly on top of it, I'd screw it to it. Uh, yeah. yeah, don't sit it directly on top of it. Um, so like if, you're, if you're planning on buying boxes, like uh, all the plan is here, I would make a box. Like do, you can gain one YouTube, Barnold Trust, making a box. He, the guy that's making it never picked up a saw in his life. So my background is I was a carpenter one time. This guy never picked up a, a saw in his life. And that was the idea of the video to show people that they can make the box. You don't have to be a carpenter or anything like that. Okay. Um, and, but if you want to buy a box currently at the minute in the UK, there are 269 sterling, uh, not including delivery. In Ireland, we're a bit cheaper at about 200 euros a box. Yeah. I don't know, is there an advantage to being white? I, I, probably not, to be honest. But um, just to show you, that's a barn owl egg there. You know, that's a barn owl egg. So that's they were eggs that oh, failed. Yeah. yeah, and they, you can see I got the dirty job of blowing them out. But um, they don't look like that when they come out. Nest, believe me, like they're dirty, dirty looking yolks. And and barn owls nest sites in general are dirty anyway. Like they they just poo wherever they want. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's why you'd say this is a just to show you. It's a, this is a barn owl skull. So you think he's when I take air now, you'll think her head is big. But that's a barn owl skull. That guy was found on the road last year. Obviously, it wasn't in that state, but um, so that's the, it, their, their skull is quite small, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. If you find an owl that's injured or yeah. just down, call on us. Down, hungry, yeah, what, I mean, I know it's not an amateur job, but do you pick it up and try? Yeah, so it? you're always better off not to, you're always better to pick it up, so you just need to be a bit co conscious of what you're doing. You're mm -hmm. not worried about the beak with all birds, but you're worried about the legs. You'll find out now in a minute why, mm -hmm. but uh. They, they will have a go at you if you're trying to pick them up. So the best thing is a jacket or something to throw it over, pick it up, put it in a yeah. box, put it somewhere warm and dark, and then call, you give us a buzz and we'll get one. So we have 70 volunteers. Like we work with three different organizations, I suppose. We, like we're founding members of Ireland's Wildlife Rehabilitators. So there's a, there's a load of rehabbers in there. Um, so like we do get calls from people who say, I picked up an owl Monday and they ring us on the Friday and then the owl dies. Oh. Or they picked up some animal. So it is specialized. Um, you know, like, unfortunately for people, like, they think they're, they're doing good, but they're not. You're killing it. If you bring it home and you don't ring someone straight away, you're killing it. 
Um, it doesn't matter what you think your experiences with animals or rearing that you rear the robin, you're killing it. Owls are, are specialised. You can kill it by force feeding it. So there's a pellet trying to come up when you're putting food in, you kill it. So we've had that a lot. And like, what can you say to the people when you arrive there? Like, I'd be boiling inside, but you can't give out to someone. They think they're doing well. So the crucial thing is, try catch it, because no point in ringing me telling me you've seen an owl on the road running around the place, and I spend, I might send someone here from Tipperary. And, you know, if, it depends on who's available. And they come down, they can't find it. So it's always best to try catch it if you can, if it's safe. As I said, throw something over it, put it in a box. Quiet is the main thing, that, that you don't stress them out. And then ring someone. We'll come pick it up, get it to a vet straight away. Um, if, it, if it can be saved, looked after and brought back, it'll go, it'll be looked after for a few weeks and you'll be involved in the release because you were the person that found it. So you tell us where you found it, we'll come, we'll go, we'll release it. That's generally what happens. But um, about 50-50, you're getting them back really. They're, they don't all get back. She's, she was a captive bred owl. Um, I was against getting an owl, to be honest, on the project because I don't like owls and stuff. I don't like animals being kept in captivity. Yeah. I'm not into well, zoos. I'm not into, well, I'm not into zoos. Like, I don't like them. I think it's it's cruel to go up and see animals like that. Um, but we had a meeting with, any, I don't know if any of you want to be mad into barn owls now to know who I'm talking about, but David Ramsden is the guy that set up the Barn Owl Trust. He's like, you know, he's a climate activist guy, but and we had a meeting with him and one of the girls involved, She's I think she's there in one of those pictures, Ali, who works all over the world on conservation projects. She said, I'm trying to talk John into getting an owl because we're going to schools and giving visits. And he came out and said, you're absolutely lunatic not to, because like, you're not taking an owl from the wild but he said the amount of interest you get from people, and it's true, like I used to go to school sure, and I'd be talking and kids would be like, you know, like yeah. they don't give a damn. They might look at the video footage, but as soon as they know that they're going to see Aaron, like they're like instantly. And then, yeah, and people have never seen an owl before. So it, it, is, it is a big bang for your book kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And my worry was that she wouldn't have enough stimulation. And, but well, like, bred just from an egg, so to speak, or what? I, I she's probably bred by two adult birds, probably bred her, this guy, in captivity. in captivity, yeah. There's guys doing that, I'm, I'm like, there's, there's stuff going on in Ireland where people are breeding them and releasing them and it's totally wrong as well, like, do you know? It's totally, like, we've, we've kind of talked about that, you'll get people going on Facebook saying, I'm doing a great job, I'm, I have a little project going here where I'm breeding them and releasing them every year and I'm contributing to, and it's, they're not. They're, we're picking them up dead on the roads because, you know, it's, it's... So you can see, you can see this is, yeah, this is air now. You can see the dots here in her chest. And you can see why you're wearing a glove. So this is what you, um, you can turn off, you can turn off that screen, yeah. Um, so she's, she, she's a female and she's fully grown. So she's not going to get any bigger than that. Yeah. Another thing she's going to do in a minute is a poo. So don't be panicking. <laughs> yeah, like without fail, it's it's an instinct for the it's yeah. an instinct for them like kind of like to you know if, same when they're going any time an owl you see an owl going flying as well it does a little <laughs> spurt out the back but like you can see she's 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 happy out unless one if somebody let a big shout now she yeah. might try and go um she's always looking up to try and get up on top of something and she wouldn't yeah. fly away from me but she she and she's not I don't treat her as a falconry bird I'm not against falconry but I'd have to manage her weight. The way they get the birds to come to them is for food. So she gets fed whenever she wants food, she gets fed. Like, that's it. And so if she flew, she's starting to fall asleep there now. So if she, if she flew now, she, and I, I'd have to just go over and pick her up. Like, so I was giving a talk to about 200 people in a, in a hall down Roscommon last week, and we were in the hall, and I said, watch, I'll show you a trick. I won't be able to do the trick here now, but usually what I do is I open this box. People say, oh, my God, she's in this little box, and it's, it's cruel. But in an S site, chimney that size you could get three or four of them down that so, mm -hmm. she, so she's really happy with the box so I said watch this and normally when I open this up and I let her go if I'm away from it she fly in and jump into it okay. and but I let it go this day and she went up on top of the bloody stage up in the top so I turned around and said has anybody got a ladder because she's not coming down so you know but when I go up to pick her up she'll just sit there and she'll talk to me and I'll have to try to pick her up and bring her away but you can see the size of her claws look yeah, yeah. an interesting thing about about owls as well on the on the second claw in you'll see they have a little comb built in a little piece sticking out. If you run your finger down along it, you'll see it's all serrated and they use that for cleaning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, so 
She's very calm, isn't she? Yeah, so she's imprinted and she's been in, like, she's done over 300 talks, 400 talks. They say, like, we're, yeah, she's, you know, she's been on these talks all the time. And when you go into a class full of kids and you say, look, can you be quiet? It doesn't work out that they're quiet. Like, they're screeching yeah. chairs, they're ooing, they're on, they're talking. You see her looking at the box the whole time. Look, that's all she wants to do when I was going there. But um, I just break her concentration. Look at her. <laughs> um, but so a typical uh, an owl when it's been aggressive you corner an owl in a room and it's injured like it'll puff itself up out its wings and it starts you, you hear, people call it beak clack, clapping she mm -hmm. was attempting to do it when she's seen her phone there so if you sometimes you hold something in front of her she doesn't recognize it she'll start she'll just puff herself up a small bit and she start clapping her beak together but like the the one on we have up on facebook is proper what she was doing was she was so susan down in battery built in Ireland, believe it or not does all her rehab so her background is with birds of prey and then we've Bev down here in Clare. Some of you might know Bev from the Hedgehog. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. So we work with Bev as well. So we're in a group um, and they'll take the birds and they'll be seen. We'll put them through the vet and, and cover the cost of a lot of that or Susan might have to do it down there. But uh, Susan went in to pick up the bird and we were returning it and she threw a mouse into it first and it tried, it's protecting its prey like. So it threw its wings over the top of it and started threatening Susan. But it's a really good video to show you what they're like if you corner them, you know. Like she's not typical of, uh, she's, she's nowhere even near a wild owl, like, like she, yeah. you know, she's not, like, she'll put up with so much, mm. you know, as I said, like, she comes into the house in the evening, the first thing she do is fly up in the lampshade and I let her go, she'll look for the cat and the dog, because, uh, yeah, like, know. yeah, and I need to keep an eye on them, because the cat or the dog, they're, she, she they don't like her, because she, she, she tries to pounce on them all the time, and chase, them. they don't know what the bloody hell she is, so I have to keep an eye on them, no, she, she's in all the time, so she's in, she's in her, she's what's called an Avery, which is like, it's as big as this, it's, Right, and then she's got a, there's a shed attached to that Avery with a hole and she flies into the shed and she's access to the shed and she's a box in the shed then she can go into. So she's a fairly big area. She's loads of stuff in there. Like, like so I put a camera in there one night just to see for the crack what the story was and she's, we have a swing in there and she's on the swing, like <laughs> back and forth or um, the odd time a mouse something might go through and she'll kill it. Okay. Yeah, so she's, she's able to catch her. So I would say that if she escaped and if she escaped and she would survive in the wild, I'd be confident of that if she did get away, like. Um, but uh, like no wild animal is, is a pet and uh, definitely not an owl. So if you had her and you didn't know what you were doing, your neighbors would be wanting to shoot you because she'd be calling all night. Like she's been, I wouldn't say trained, but the way she was, the way she was, so we have a girl called Ali on the project. She's a falconer. She works all over the world. She's from Brazil. She's, she's president of the World Falconry Association. And she had her since she was a chick. And they have a method of when you feed, keep, keep giving it food, whenever it, like never let it go hungry, and it doesn't call. And then they follow that through adulthood. But if you didn't do that and you got a chick and you brought it home and you let it call for food, it would always call. Yeah. So you'd have her as an adult screaming at night. Yeah. Well, they do make, they do make uh, different noises. Like I've been out on sites, I've been out in where you do night service sometimes. We've, the, easiest, the easiest way to find out if you're an owl on site is to leave it till a certain time of the year and then you go out and you just sit sit 100 meters away from, from uh, the site and listen, yeah. and you'll hear them, right? But I've often been out and-, I, and I've and heard this thing before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never, I've never seen a barrel yeah. right at my feet, but not far away. Yeah, well, you'll hear them. They, they make a myriad, like, like people, they make a myriad of different sounds, you know, they're not it's like- It's a shrieking kind of Yeah, it's a shriek. They don't, like, uh, there's no hooting and tooting. Yeah, yeah. There's no hooting and tooting anyway. They, they'll be laughing when I go into kids. Yeah, what sound does an owl make? Yeah. Yeah, and I, if, if I was to tell you the amount of calls I've got about people thinking pigeons are owls, like, the, no, from the calls. Oh, jeez, nothing like it. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's just because they think they're hooting, like, they think it's, it's an owl, you know, so. Yeah, so it's, it's one of those things, you know, so. Yeah, so it does, it, it, it does have ears, but they don't stick out, so it's basically two holes in the skull. An interesting about, uh, an interesting about an owl as well, they have one ear up high and one down low. And again, as I said, there's a name, there's a name on that. I'm not into the scientific side of it, but they can, it allows them anyway to pinpoint. Well, it allows them, yeah, to pinpoint the sound exactly. Um, you know, so the, think about it, you're flying the pitch black and you can pick up a mouse. You know, you have to hit it first go well, and pick it up. Black, yeah, 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 yeah. And is that partly why the reason they went, they might smash into something? Yeah. Because a bit of science is handy. Yeah, so if, if, if so if we were releasing an owl, somebody commented, we released an owl last year, um, actually, actually it was down in Clare, we released it, uh, Farsight of Curra Finn, and the girl that released it, released it when it was still bright, all right? And someone commented, you shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have done that, but that's rubbish, because we don't know where the owl is from. Right? 
And if you release an owl on a, a yeah, if you release an owl, you just need to release it where you know there's not a lot of jackdaws and stuff like that. You wouldn't re release it at one o'clock in the day because it's going to be flying around. But eight o'clock in the evening, when it's still a bit bright brightness in it, you'd release it um, just before. So you're given an opportunity to see. So studies have shown that that owls, it's always safer for an owl to stay in an area it's used to. It's when it progresses outside of that that it gets killed because yeah. it runs into a tree it doesn't know is there on a night when there's no moon it, it runs into you know it, it just doesn't know what's there like they're not their vision is like better than ours but it's not they don't hunt with their vision it's well, sound it's still fairly good, yeah 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 okay. yeah so that's why uh, exactly yeah yeah it's yeah. it's shadows it's uh, i know is it a photographic memory or what but yeah